Hi guys, welcome back. So we've got a really interesting experiment to do today. Now, a friend of mine, he's a retired military ballistics expert. He says, I've been testing our pellets wrong all this time. What we need to do is shoot them as interleaved serials. Now, normally we would shoot, I don't know, five shot, 10 shot groups of one type. Then we'd move on to another and we'd make our assumptions and see which was the best. Now, when we're shooting in the wind, it's always a problem because as from some of the last videos, the wind started deteriorating further through the test. And of course it made the last ones that we shot look a lot worse than the ones we shot at the beginning of the test. So the whole idea with this is that it reduces the time in between the groups because we're going to shoot one of these directly followed by one of these. So there'll be no leading in the barrel, no cleaning of the barrel, simply one after the other until we've got a couple of five shot groups down at range. There'll be two targets, one on top of each other. Each one will be shot at its own target each time. The reason they're on top of each other is so that the angle that I'm shooting at will be relatively the same with the wind direction and things like that. So it's going to be very interesting. I'm not sure how it's going to pan out. I don't know whether it's going to work at all, to be honest. However, you've got to listen to these people. They know what they're talking about. It says I've been doing it wrong, so we're going to test it. So 450 head size Barracuda FTs, 4.51s. We'll start off with some control groups, just doing traditional five shot groups, and then we'll do the interleaved serials now. The reason the military do it this way, when you've got ammo that costs more than your average house, you need to obviously be mindful that you're not wasting them and you also need to make sure that your results are accurate. Doing it this way apparently gives much more accurate results for what they're doing and potentially it may well mean that we can get some better results with our air rifles. So I'm going to get everything set up and I'll see you at the farm. All right, guys, we're here. I've just re-zeroed the scope onto here. So this is the new Falcon. I've had it on the um, Catram for a little while, so it's hopefully going to stay on the XTI now for a little while. Now, we've got a gentle breeze run, and it's not too bad at all. We're down here sheltered with just under 25 yards. It's going to give us a good opportunity to shoot some control groups. So I'm going to do 4.5 zeros first. I've got the card down the end. We're just going to run off a couple of different groups. Then I'm going to move straight onto the 4.51s. Once we've done that, we'll start then alternating the ammo onto its own individual target down the end there, and that will hopefully allow us to see whether or not running the alternate ammo will actually give us the same or worse groups than just doing control groups. Now, the whole idea of this is to reduce the time of testing, the amount of ammo that you use. Ultimately, we've got full control over these rifles. We can control everything from the power to the optics. We can control the size of the ammo the lot, but what you can't control is the wind. By reducing the time of the test, it should mean that the wind conditions and the prevailing weather conditions are much more consistent through the test, which hopefully will mean that you get more consistent results. Let's see if I can pick off the little crosses I've drawn on the cards to start with. I won't adjust the scope. It looks like at the moment it just wants a couple of clicks to the right, but we'll leave it where it is for the moment. It doesn't actually make much difference where the actual point of impact are we're going to be looking at the group sizes ultimately but certainly look pretty accurate so far yeah you can see on that one I've just shot so they're all coming in just a little bit high and a little bit to the left again that's just a scope adjustment to bring it back where you need it however they feel pretty good they load nicely the sight picture's good and I can actually watch them in flight all the way through, which is pretty cool. That one moved a little tiny bit. Not too bad. Like I say, these are a very popular pellet with the bench rest shooters. These are what Matt Airability uses and of course, he's probably one of the UK's best bench rest shooters at the moment. Although he is sponsored, so he probably gets fancy ones. Well, I'll tell you what, although we're not well zeroed, they're going exactly where they ought to. To be honest, they could do that all day. They are pretty good. Right, okay, so I've just shot a few groups there, really nice tight groups. They go exactly where you want them to. Of course, these are a bench rest accurate ammo. A lot of people are using them. And to be honest, if I had just adjusted off my aim points, I weren't shooting out the middle of my target. I'm sure I could tighten them groups up even more so. Yeah, so first ones are the 4.50s, really happy with those. I'm gonna swap straight over to the 4.51s now. Just gonna go and readjust the GoPro down the end. There won't be any leaden in period, so we're gonna go straight from one to the other, and then what we'll do is we monitor the groups, we'll see whether they take a bit of time to settle in. Then we're gonna go over and start interleaving them, see how it goes. Right then, we're straight into the 4.51s. We're not making any scope adjustments. We're actually coming in a little bit high and a little bit left of our aim point, so hopefully, these will be somewhere similar. GoPro's on, so I'm just going to move over to the second row from the left now. 
same again let's see how these ones run okay that's interesting that's going straight through the center of the target oh that went up a little bit higher that may well have been me well maybe they are moving around in the barrel slightly this is my concern by swapping between the ammos and alternating. I don't think that either of them will get a chance to be fully leaded into the barrel. So let's just pick another couple of shots off and then little crosses. How much do you want to bet I shoot one of the wrong targets when I'm interleaving them, swapping between them? I've got them marked up, so hopefully we should be all right. I've marked up my tins and my targets. Right, that'll do for those. I think we've got a reasonably good idea of what they're going to group like. They actually look like the 4.51s group marginally better. Always hard to say. So what we're going to do now is swap onto the interleaved ones. I'm going to move the cameras about again. I've got my tins. You might not be able to see that inside. I've got that labelled 4.50 and this one's labelled 4.51. So I've just been shooting the 4.51s. I'll start with the 4.51 on the 4.51 target. Then we're going to go straight to the 4.50s and hopefully we don't shoot the wrong one. So let's get it set up now. Right, we're all moved around, so we're just shooting the 451, so let's go straight onto the 4.51 again, and we're now into leaving them. So this is the lower target of the two. We're basically going to alternate five shots into each card, so 4.51. This is quite stressful, it feels like I'm going to shoot the wrong target at any point. Right, I think this is the last one. Four, five, zero in the top card. That should be five in each. Oh, that's interesting. If anything, the groups of the four, five, zeros actually look tighter being interleaved than when they were shot as a control group. Right, let's go and have a look at those. Stay. Right, oh, well that's unusual. Four point five zeros, four point five ones interleaved. One two, one two, one two, back and forwards. The groups themselves actually look slightly smaller when they were being interleaved. However, the point of impact's different. So although the point of impact's different interleaving them, it actually looks as if there's no real ill effects. Now, the difference in head size between a 450 and a 451 is minimal. I'm absolutely certain that a lot of the budget pellets have significantly worse tolerances than that. So overall, quite interesting. I think we've run out to 45 yards now, but look at that. That's sort of a seven mil group shooting one after t'other. This one's a little bit larger. There's a little bit more spread on the four five zeros, but these 4.51s, I reckon that they've got some real potential. So going forward with our pellet testing for the XTR, we're gonna use these a bit more, maybe look at sizing them, lubing them, adjusting the power and also the airstripper as well. We've made no adjustments to any of that. So overall, it definitely looks like it could work if you're using pellets of the same brand. I definitely wouldn't wanna be swapping between a softer JSB and an H&N, but I am quite surprised. I was expecting these to be much more scattered than they are. And in most cases, well, they actually look better than the um, control groups. So yeah, overall, interesting. Right, let's run it out to 45 yards then, and we're gonna do straight away interleaved shots. We won't bother with any control groups at 45. There's a bit of a breeze running and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we're around at 45 yards now. All I've done is adjusted the um, focus distance on the scope, nothing else. We're gonna use the red circles on the cards as our aim points for 25. So somewhere around 40 mil below that should be our points of impact. Exactly the same as we did. We've got five 4.5 zeros and five 4.51s. I've got them numbered and the cards. Once we've done the interleaved serials, I'm probably then just gonna shoot a couple of quick groups with the 4.51s. They appear to be slightly better at the moment. Just wanna see what they're grouping like and make the most of the low wind. Got the windicator stick there you can see that we've got just a tiny bit of a head wind so i'm gonna get this all sighted up and we'll get cracked on right we start with the 4.50 so that's the top target of the two still shooting at 10 mag wow there's a lot of drop on that one right well we'll carry on i think we're just about on paper little bit of drift as you'd expect 
you keep an eye on the old indicator stick here, you can see that we're just punching into a gentle headwind. Well, I tell you what, although we were almost off the bottom of the card, they both look like they've grouped pretty well. A little bit of wind drift, as you'd expect, moving them back and forth, but they do drop quite a lot more than I thought they would do. There's a good mil dot and a half of drop there, so a little bit more than a JSB would do. In fact, that looks like they're dropping more than a JSB heavy, which is basically a grain heavier all but. So, interesting. Like I say, that'll do for the interleave cereals now. What I'm going to do with the 4.51s, they seem to be the better of the two pellets, slightly better suited to this barrel. So I'm just going to pick off a few aim points on the card down there and just see if we can actually um, aim off in the wind and see whether or not we can hit some targets. Right then, 4.51s definitely seemed a little bit less drifty in the wind. So I'm just going to see if I can pick off a couple of them circles now. Got a little gentle headwind, only shooting at 10 mag. And the go is on. Let's just have a look, see what sort of aim points we've got. Right, let's see if we can take out that middle circle. Oh, a little tiny bit high. Bear in mind that's a one centimetre circle. 45. <laughs> Stacking them through the same hole, that's pretty cool. Oh, that one skewed off way to the left. Didn't feel the wind do anything then, didn't notice anything on the wind indicator or anything like that. Maybe it was a flyer or maybe I'm just being a numpty, who knows. Oh, it's really hard to judge the wind in here. You've got basically sand, there's only a few bits of grass. All I've really got is the wind on my arm and my face and the wind indicator string. There's not a lot of telltale signs down range, unfortunately. Well, when the wind's consistent, these absolutely bang through the same hole. That's pretty good. I'm going to move on to one of the circles on the right. Go for the lower one, shall we? Oh! <laughs> Split it. I'm actually aiming off about half a mil dot at the moment got it that's a one centimeter circle and i think i've just middled that right let's go on to the one above it and this guys is why it's always important to shoot in the wind as much as you can <laughs> i think we'll call that good for the moment <laughs> that group will only open up right we'll get these home and we'll have a look over these it's pretty interesting Definitely think the 4.51s have edged it, and I think going forward we're going to try this again with some of the JSBs. Now I'd really like to come back and do this test again in some really strong wind. You can see why the military do it. So let's get home and we'll um, cool down a bit. Guess not. I'll see you back at home. Right then, we're back. That was really interesting. I've got to be honest, the results are, well, I didn't know what to expect ultimately. I certainly thought that when we were shooting the interleaved serials that the groups were going to be worse. So these were the two control groups that we shot, just standard five shot groups. And I was just picking off a couple of these little crosshairs here. Now you could see here, and as I mentioned in the video, I needed to give it a little click right. Swapped over to the four five ones. The point of impact moved slightly. Now what really surprised me is that we actually managed to get a group at all out of these. They are actually groups, they're not as scattered as I thought they would be, and they've also dropped slightly, so the point of impact is a little bit lower. This is probably because they haven't had a chance to fully let in, but the fact that we've actually managed to hit what we was aiming at, I mean, that's a six mil group, which at 25 yards with a gentle breeze, that's, you'd be happy with that with anything really and don't forget I wasn't aiming off I was making no adjustments for the wind letting them ride the wind and do its thing now that's the whole idea of shooting these as interleaved cereals you let the wind do its thing and by doing one after the other it means that for the duration of that test the wind was more consistent than doing all of these followed by all of these because you may be 10 15 20 minutes later when you're doing your next batch and of course the weather the wind may have changed so overall really quite interesting we're definitely going to have to come back to this I'll probably do the same again with some JSBs and some arms fields and see if we get similar results however a lot lot better than i was anticipating it was quite immediately obvious that the 451s were just a little bit tied to grouping so that's when i went straight out to 45 yards i'll show you that card now right so this is our 45 yarders these were the aim points for 25 yards Bit more drop than i thought now actually some of that is me the scope is a lot lower now the scope's almost an inch lower an inch closer to the barrel than i've had it for a long time so they definitely drop a little bit more than a jsb heavy does at 45 yards but not a lot a lot of this is just me 
getting used to the lower scope and actually just being a numpty and didn't really make sure I had enough space on the card. However, they definitely dropped a little bit more than JSB heavy at range. They actually run through about 15 feet per second slower than a JSB heavy. Also about the same as the HN 8s that we tried. So these are a slightly harder lead. They do seem to lose a little bit of speed, but down range, not too bad at all. About 30 mil of drift and about 20 mil just over drift on the 451. So you can see here that there's slight difference in the drifts with these. Even at 25 yards, we'd already noticed that the 451 seemed to be a slight better fit. This is where it got interesting. So bear in mind, I hadn't aimed off for any of these. These were the first pellets that I'd aimed off. Two in here, two in here. This one here, I'm not quite sure what happened with that. I don't at any point remember the wind blowing that way that hard. Picking these off, these are actually just under the outside diameter of that red circle is nine and a bit millimeters, so just under 10 mil. Couple in there, pick that one off in the middle, absolutely blinding after only just aiming off for a few of them. So the 451s in the XTI barrel seemed to work very well and they were very easy to get a judge of where they were going. Now, granted, the wind wasn't doing much, I was only aiming off about a half mil dot upwind. Absolutely perfect, nice and consistent, really, really happy with those. So I'm going to get some more of these for further testing but we're definitely going to come back to the interleaved serials. Now, I'd be interested to know if any of you have ever tested like this, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing going forward. The people that are in the know, the military boys all said, right, this is what you need to do. So it's certainly the results that we've got, even at 45 yards, absolutely as I would expect. Now, potentially this drop would actually be a little bit less. So our point of impact would be a little bit higher on both of these had we given them a chance to let in. I do not know yet. We need to come back to it and check it. So overall, still probably more questions than answers, but the fact that we actually managed to get something of a group at 25 and 45 yards, interleaving them pellets, very interesting. We're definitely going to have to come back to this. So I'd certainly be interested to know if any of you have done similar things, any similar testing, but if you've got any pellet testing to do of fairly similar pellets, I definitely wouldn't want to go from an h and to a JSB. The different lead alloys that they're made from, I don't think it's going to work. But if you've got some pellets that are very similar like this, just in head size or whatever, I think you could get away with it. Do need to correlate these again with some more windy conditions. We need to retry them when it's really windy and see what sort of results we get. So yeah, more questions and answers as per usual, but very interesting. And I certainly think that there's some mileage in this. If it helps us reduce our testing time and work out, get more consistent results, I'm all for it. So yeah, overall quite happy with that. It was fun to test, a bit unusual, potentially a different avenue of testing going forward. So that do it for this one, guys. I will catch you in the next one.